I am full on sweating right now. It is way too hot for this. <sighs> Hello. I'm back on the internet. Well, I'm kind of back, except I'm not really back because this is all totally new. Welcome to my new room. I'm going to try and do like a little room tour at some point because it's starting to look a little bit more put together now, which is cool. But um, for now, this is all you're getting. <laughs> Seeing as it's been a while since I filmed a video, I thought I'd do a Q&A to try and get you back into the swing of it because we all know that when YouTubers can't be asked to think of anything proper, they just do a Q&A. So I asked on Instagram if any of you guys had any probing, burning, they are two verbs that should not go together. Any interesting questions that you might have wanted to ask me? Um, if you want to get involved next time, then I'm at Lucy Jane Wood on Instagram. That's why I always ask for my Q&A questions. But uh, let's just get stuck in, shall we? And we'll have a little chat about some things. Um, Akiko B X. Sorry if I say all of your usernames wrong, which is fairly likely, seeing as I'm not uh, particularly cool. How do you do your hair in the morning? Uh, I don't. I wake up and go. I have naturally quite straight hair, so most of the time I don't need to straighten it. Um, I wash it every couple of days, and that is literally all I do. This is why I stopped doing beauty videos, because <laughs> I don't do anything. AKA Lowry asked, what is the earliest job you aspired to do? I've been thinking about this one for a couple of minutes, and I'm pretty sure it was vet. Like, I. I really wish that I was a vet still now. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't very good at science. Like, I had to work my bum off to get a good grade in science. And even now, I still don't really understand how I ever passed. Then I really wanted to be a pop star, obs. Uh, then I wanted to be um, an illustrator, because I used to really love drawing. Then I thought I wanted to be like a proper magazine journalist. Um, like in like fashion and stuff, but then I was like, uh, hang on a sec, I can't really dress myself very well. But then finally I had an epiphany and I was suddenly like, well actually, I really like writing and I really like talking about celebrities, hence my job now. Rebecca underscore Anderson 97. Does that mean you were born in 1997? Oh my god, I'm so old. She says, if you could tell a fresher three things, what would they be? Love your videos. Thanks, babes. I would say, talk to anyone and everyone. Don't just look at someone and think, oh, they don't look like my kind of person. I won't get on with them. I'm not going to talk to them. Because, like, some of the mates I made at uni would were people that I would never have previously spoken to before. But on the other flip side, my second piece of advice would also be to say, if you're not comfortable doing something, don't completely and utterly force yourself to do it like you need to push yourself but if there's a situation that you're really not comfortable with like if you're not a big drinker and everybody's going on a massive wild night out and you know that you're gonna hate it don't feel like you have to go so they're slightly contradictory things so this is probably terrible advice um and the third one i would say is try and make your bedroom like as homey as possible like take loads of photos with you take loads of things that you can pin up on your pin board like take a nice duvet cover just take loads of little things that like will make you feel like you're at home um because i think the more homely you make it the less homesick you will feel that was a good one more than makeup asks what is your wildest drunken memory i'm not sure i even want to share this with you i'm pretty sure my mum and my nan will watch this uh i've got a few to be honest uh i remember one halloween where we went to a club in liverpool called the crazy house and it was like just the sweatiest most disgusting like grossest night out ever i have loads of hilarious drunken times though maybe i should make a video about that rach t26 says who would you want to play you in a film of your life obviously jennifer lawrence because she's just like the best person ever i totally want j-law to play me um i don't think she would she's way too cool to play me i think it would probably end up being amy schumer because <laughs> because most of her film roles are just me, really. I think it would probably be Lena Dunham, actually. <laughs> Shelley AJC says, how are you finding living in London? Actually, loads of you asked how I'm getting on in London, which was really nice to see, so thank you very much for asking. I'm having a blast. I'm having such a good time. Like, I totally feel like I've made the right decision. I'm very, like, busy. I haven't been this busy in years. Like, I can't remember. I haven't had a single day where I've sat down and just done nothing, which is crazy because I've literally spent the last two years doing nothing. I love my housemates, they're so wonderful, I love my job, um, it's really nice to be back with old friends that I haven't seen for ages. Like, I'm just so happy, everything's great. Thanks! 
for asking. <laughs> it's very kind of you. Underscore Jessica Hurst says, what do you do as your day job and what made you start YouTube? P.S. Love your videos. Thanks, love you. Um, as my day job, I am a... I hate the term journalist, like I don't like to use it because I think it has a lot of negative connotations. So I tend to call myself a writer. Uh, I write for an online teen magazine slash website called Sugarscape. It's super fun, I absolutely love it. I've been working from home for two years and now I'm in London, I'm working in the office with everyone, which is really, really cool. And what made me start YouTube was I just graduated and I had a summer ahead of me of nothingness. Joanna L. Marais. I think that's how you say it, um, says, what is the most valuable lesson you've learned? More recently, I've learned that I'm stronger than I thought I was, and I'm quite proud that I'm like back on my own two feet now. When I was at school, it was like my biggest concern was what everybody was thinking about me. I still don't like it when I know that somebody doesn't like me or that I, when I've fallen out with someone, like I'm not comfortable with the idea, but I'm more comfortable with it than I was if that makes sense. I just think life's too short to worry. Just have fun and do whatever you want as long as it's not hurting anybody and just be happy. That's what I've learned really. Just do whatever to be happy. Cool. Oh, and always choose pizza because... Next one. Claudia says, what did you take for A-level and would you recommend an English literature degree? Um, I was actually thinking, I live with a girl called Sarah now, I'll link her channel below. She's a fashion journalist. Um, so maybe we could get together and do a video about getting into into different aspects of journalism and talk about sort of internships and stuff. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know. Anyway, back to the question. I'm rambling. For A-level, I took English Literature, French and Fine Art, um, and I got three A's. I would recommend an English Literature degree if you're willing to work your arse off. Um, it's a very, very intense degree. There is so much reading that your brain will feel like it's exploding. I was kind of stupid in thinking that an English literature degree would just be reading books, which is what I wanted it to be, but in reality it's actually very quite sort of theory based. A lot of things to do with like philosophers and all that kind of stuff and psychologists and things that I wasn't particularly interested in, like I just wanted to read, man. Yeah, I would recommend it, as long as you like know full well what you're going into. Uh, Isabel Higgins, 97. Hi, Isabel. Uh, she said, what do you miss from home now you've moved to London? I'm mostly just missing my cat, to be honest. I haven't bought her here because like we live in a fairly busy area and I live in a flat on the second floor, so it wouldn't be much fun for her. It's just a bit risky like bringing her to London because I don't want her to get like squashed or eaten or anything. I'm literally just a crazy cat lady without a cat now which is the most tragic thing ever. Helena Alderson, what's your best drunk story? Guys, I do do things other than get drunk, I promise. Emily.Lewis65, what's your most memorable experience involving alcohol? Seriously, I just think I'm drunk all the time. Naomi Suta, what would you advise to someone who is going into year 11 but is very pressured to get the best grades? Right, this is something that I relate to hugely. I went to a very sort of academic school that put a lot of pressure on you to get good grades. I know it seems like the worst thing in the world when you're going through it. And I remember just feeling like there was no end to this horrible amount of work. But once you've got those grades, like they are under your belt forever. But at the same time, do not, if you feel like it's getting too much, do not keep it to yourself. Like you need to be, telling a teacher that you really trust and like that you're finding it very difficult to cope with everything if it's getting too much. So don't let the pressure get on top of you, like use it as a good thing and use it as like motivation but don't let it get too much. Just don't let it get to you too much. Work hard but make sure you're playing hard as well. I think that would be my line of thought for that one. Christiana says, which was the first ever TV show you binge watched? Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> which might seem like a strange choice but I literally used to sit and watch maybe like eight episodes of that in a day when I was younger. I'm still obsessed with it now. Like if I'm feeling down or lousy or kind of just like I have nothing to do, I'll sit and watch some Sabrina because it's still so funny. More recently, however, I have become totally obsessed with Pretty Little Liars and I'm watching it for the second time now with my flatmate Sarah because she's never seen it before and I wanted to watch it from the beginning anyway. Um, and now that we've had the big A reveal, it's actually really fun watching it from the beginning and like trying to piece everything together as you go along. Speaking of PLL, 
Um, Danielle Winrow says, what do you think about the big A reveal? I really wanted it to be someone that would be like a huge bombshell. I really wanted it to be Caleb um, with Hannah as Redcoat and Ashley Marin as the Black Widow. Like I have no idea how that even would have been a thing, but I just really wanted that to be it because it would have been so good. So in comparison to a storyline like that, which is kind of what I wanted, it wasn't quite as exciting as I wanted it to be, but I thought the storyline itself was quite cool. I know a lot of people were a little bit disappointed and just like flat about it, um, but I actually really enjoyed the episode and I'm so excited for the uh, five years forward thing, the time jump. Um, PRZ13 says, do you have any book recommendations? Um, did you stick to your rule to read 30 books a year? One of my resolutions was to read 30 books this year. I'm not doing too bad. I think I'm maybe on sort of like 19 around that mark somewhere. Maybe I need to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, at the moment I'm reading the woman who wrote Gone Girl has written two others. One's called Sharp Objects and one's called Dark Places. I read Sharp Objects, that was really good. And at the moment I'm reading Dark Places, which is so good. I'm absolutely addicted to it. I'm literally looking forward to my commute in the morning just so I can read this book. And next on my list is The Girl on the Train because so many people have been talking about that and I feel like I'm really missing out on the fact I haven't read that. I'd just like to point out that my friends are the worst ever and literally hijacked this comment section. So Sarah has asked me who is A. I'm not telling you, you have to watch all six series. Kate has said, want a date? No. Lauren has said, Laureen's Euphoria is a song of a generation. Discuss. True fact. Jenny has said, what's your favourite McFly song? <laughs> My favourite McFly song is Sorry's Not Good Enough. Emma has said You Are a Butt, which is nice, thanks Emma. And Jem has said Would You Rather Lick My Ear or My Underarm? And to be honest, I would rather lick neither of those things, but if I had to choose, I would probably choose your ear. So I finally, That's all. Cool, so I finally filmed a video! Excellent news! I feel like now my life has a bit more structure and I'm actually sort of like getting up and going to work and getting dressed every day, <laughs> which is something I didn't do when I worked from home. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that I'm going to do this properly. <laughs> I know you've all heard that before, I'm sorry, I'm trying my best, I'm just rubbish. But um, I'm going to the pub now, it's a very nice evening here in London, um, so I'm off to drink alcohol. Just proving all of you right really, aren't I? <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment about all these video suggestions that I've put to you today. Let me know if you like any of them. And also, let's pick a question for you to all answer. I think you should all tell me what book you're reading at the moment because I really want some book recommendations. So let me know in the comments what you're reading, if it's a good one and if I'd like it. Um, and I think that's all I've got to say. I think I'm done. Uh, so thanks for watching and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.